Still, good morning, and I'm Brian. We welcome you to this segment. My name is Still Nonye Nwokoye. Today is World Health Day. As I told you earlier, that uh, we are going to look at that. Of course, let's see how healthy we are as a people, you know, how we are helping ourselves to be healthier by the day. In the studio this morning, I have a medical doctor, Dr. Simeon Onyemechi. Good to have you, sir. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to have been here uh, always, and happy World Health Day uh, to everybody. All right. How, uh, you know, how does it feel celebrating this day? Um, heal and hearty. Where we are, uh, all over the world, the situations, uh, uh, health challenges, uh, looking at the indices, you know, most times when we reel out these numbers, we tell you the prevalence of cancer, the prevalence of uh, malaria, other infectious diseases, prevalence of uh, non-communicable diseases, and then when we hear those millions and the deaths that have occurred with it, uh, most times uh, people are wont to think it's just numbers. Those are beings. So having a life that uh, is not included in any of those numbers is something one should be thankful about. Otherwise, you would have become among those who have been reduced uh, to uh, classroom conferences and uh, lecture seminar statistics so we thank god uh, that uh, to this time by his grace we are healthy and uh, hearty without being a part of the numbers that we reel out and uh, as we draw attention to issues of world health uh, of global health on a day like this as set out by the world health assembly ratified by the un uh, it is a time to send our heartfelt uh, 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 assurances and uh, uh, sympathy and empathy to those who are counted among the numbers and to say to them there is hope. Whichever among the numbers that you fall into, by the grace of God, with healthy living and some of the uh, issues that we'll talk about, not preempting what we are going to discuss, they will come out of those numbers and be counted among those who went in and then came out of those negative statistics. Thank you. All right. Uh, now, let's go to the Bundibos in Okaikon. Getting to the matters at hand, you know, in the midst of a pandemic, uh, polluted planet and uh, increasing diseases like cancer, just like you just said, asthma, heart disease on World Day 2022, WHO will focus global attention on urgent actions, you know, needed to keep humans and the planet healthy and, of course, foster a movement to create societies focused on well-being. That's the crux of the matter. Right. Uh, let's now look at our people generally. How, what's your assessment of our people towards health? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, the theme of the year, 2022, is very apt. You know, it's sometimes very good to know the origin of certain uh, issues that have become norm in the society. The World Health Day is to commemorate the day the World Health Organization was formed. was formed. April 7, 1948. Coming out of the Second World War, the world needed to come together to strategically and through concerted effort tackle in a very planned manner issues of global health concern a health challenge somewhere is a health challenge everywhere so to that extent looking at how the allied forces came together to defeat the perceived enemies of the world at the time of the second world war it became important that look we cannot focus on issues unilaterally we needed multilateral efforts and synergy for whatever challenge it was that was facing the world at any point in time so in the line with that the united nations had a declaration that set up a world health organization 
and the first World Health Assembly was held. Subsequently, it was agreed. Let us not just leave it at the level of its formation, but let us follow on with every year annual actions of saying these are the global challenges. When World Health Assembly meets and then the technical committees go ahead to meet, what are the global challenges that we need to be drawing attention to over the course of the next year? Let us have a health agenda that will drive country-specific actions in line with that global uh, uh, health agenda so that collectively the entire world will be healthier. Now, the first of it was celebrated sometime July 1949, but then everybody had to look at school children calendar and said, let us get it to a point where students could participate. And then April 7th was released. The theme is our planet, our health. Taking it back of our people with regards health seeking behavior, with regards how, we how important we take our health care needs, with regards how do we look at our environment, especially in these days and time of climate change. When I started, I talked about the statistics. If you look at Nigeria, I don't like to uh, uh, look at uh, health statistics only at the global and regional levels. I always like to drive it closer home. Um. When you look at malaria, for instance, which is an infective uh, cause of death, we had over 3 million deaths documented, IHMI, for the year 2020. Nigeria alone contributed 627,000 deaths in the year 2020 from malaria malaria alone if we want to extract who may be the, the one minute of silence if it gets to even 10 seconds before we say may his soul or her soul rest yes, in peace. peace then we tried At the point of that 10 seconds one minute silence it ends there if it were to be that what we hear on daily basis is three point seven four sevens crashing in nigeria it will make big news but because these folks die silently, nobody talks about it. And a lot of these kind of deaths, and we talk about cancers, mm. the incidence is rising in the country, and most of it is attitudinal issues. The determinants of cancer are mainly things that we do, how we handle our environment, how we take issues of our health important. Every year in this state, for example, in Anambra, we have annual flooding. Rainy season is coming. Mm -hmm. We are already in it. A lot, while some other places are excited about the fact that uh, oh, the rains are coming, the farmers can farm, temperatures will come down, and, and, and all of that. There are parts of this state who are living in a lot of fear, trepidation, because the rainy season is coming. And with the rain comes flooding in their areas. People who are living in environmental plains that have erosion as a challenge, once the rains are coming, they get so anxious because they do not know how many homes will be washed away, rendering people homeless. Those who live in different areas that have been converted to refuse dumps, indiscriminate dumping of waste and, and, and all of that, generated by human beings, okay? The type that uh, our governor is currently tackling with Opoku, for instance, after which, from what uh, he has said, will happen across the whole the state. Uh, state. Let us clean up our state. When you look at those kind of heaps, these were caused by mm -hmm. human beings. So, how much of Lassa fever cases have we had that, that passed on without us noticing from rodents, the rats, that breed in those waste sites? getting into people's homes biting them or contacting their food items they eat this and then they die from there a whole family sometimes will say oh they died mysteriously they died in quick successions within two weeks and some of those things but because we have not done maybe verbal autopsies not to talk of the scientific proper autopsy that will be conducted by a pathologist we end up ascribing it most times to acts of God. All right. Uh, so, 
Okay, go on. Yeah, so for me, and uh, looking at it very empirically, most of what we have done with our malaria, I highlighted polluting the air through unserviced vehicles or poorly serviced vehicles that emit smoke all over the place, exposing people to both indoor and outdoor pollutants that has made Nigeria one of the highest countries with the prevalence of asthma mm. at over 13 million mm. Nigerians living with uh, uh, asthma. And then all of this impact on the quality of lives. So at the end of the day, we speak... Uh, and, and the lifespan is shortened life by the day. Okay, yeah. we, okay, now having seen yeah. our attitude towards our health... Yeah. And uh, the, the crux of the matter being that the WHO wants to create societies focused on well-being. Yeah. Let's look at Ndibu, Anambra, for example. Uh, there's this our adage that says, Agarando Bako, Onirelie. You know, the value we place on wealth or money compared to the value we place on going to the hospital to take care of ourselves. Let's look at it critically. You know, when you tell somebody to go to the hospital, the person calculates how much is going to spend. And the person quickly goes over the counter to take a drug without actually going through the processes that he needed to go. Yeah. You know, what do you think this is impacting on the life of Ndebang? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh... I was hilariously saying to someone two, two nights ago that this is one society, the Igbo society, due to Anambra, where we have adage for everything. We are the ones who will tell you, like you just rightly said, but then in our daily attitude, we do the direct opposite. Our four beers saw through life and told us clearly, oh, these norms, but then are we really focusing now on our life as compared with the wealth? The answer is an emphatic no. For instance, somebody is ill and then rather than go through the hub of getting yourself simply, okay. say a health insurance, for example, so that payment for hospital bills become very infinitesimal, very low. This individual will rather tell you, or can you ever say, so I should go and uh, get a health insurance plan so that I become sick. I never fall ill. Meanwhile, in that person's family, maybe the elder brother, the father or the mother died from issues around waking up one morning and then complaining of headache at the back of the head that took the person's life. And uh, what that was uh, uh, translated to mean was that somebody had poisoned him. Because the incidence of uh, cause of death in, 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 in Anambra, the highest cause is quote and unquote poison. And when you ask about what is poison, you can't really explain it. But people have neglected their health care. Anybody who is above 40 as a man, must have your prostate checked. Nobody goes to check the prostate. Simple prostate-specific antigen, PSA, test can reveal significant things so that you don't live a life of prostate cancer. You check and the first one is normal, then you are allowed to do 10 yearly. Then if you find any abnormality at any time, you reduce it and then begin to delay if you were to a That is, while you get into the bathroom to take your bath, naked, check yourself. If you go to the hospital, people will live their lives with vaginal discharges, which sometimes are pointers to cervical cancer. And then they just continue to go to uh, 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 patent medicine vendors that we call commonly chemists. And we have infection, infection infection meanwhile these are already early pointers to the fact that this lady is beginning to have cervical cancer somebody is having pay, painful coitus and then keeps going to over the counter over the counter drops 
no infection, no infection. No you know, and, they, and these, are, these are pointers that yeah. the body doesn't just break down. No. Nobody wakes up and breaks down. There are... It, it is a gradual process. Incrementally and over time it gets to crescendo and then the person breaks down. We see all of those pointers. You see somebody wakes up, very terrible headache, red eyes, you know, feeling tired and sick. Blood pressure, as simple as that. The individual is just too much. Oh man, evidence has shown clearly that the that seventy one percent from Anambra State evidence that we generated the next edition of the journal it will come out that amongst those who, for instance, I, 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 I'm just going on aside in adult insurance because the idea that you have paid will prompt you. To go to the hospital, rather, even though we have some challenges with the scheme that we are tackling, I'm talking about the Asia in Anambra, where people go to health facilities, but there are some notorious ones that won't give them drugs, even basic lab investigations that they are supposed to do, they ask them to pay for it. But I like to see the cop as half at the fact that they told me this drug is not for a medical doctor you didn't go to a roadside to a quack you got in you had your vitals checked somebody has been able to make a correct diagnosis of what is wrong with you that alone will reduce by half the incidence of unplanned deaths that happen uh, 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 of, of sudden deaths i beg your pardon that happen in our society the fact that that has given you an access to get to sit before a trained qualified medical personnel to go through the full gamut of history taking and physical examination to tell what exactly is wrong with you so you realize that the societies that have lived above all of these issues where health promotion health prevention and prompt curative care is rendered at places where individuals have the proper health seeking behavior of not going to get over the counter medications but at all times will go to the hospital to get to see a qualified medical personnel but looking at the team of the day when you still go to hospitals the need for you to keep your environment clean is emphasized to clear breeding sites of mosquitoes, mosquitoes bushes growing around to make sure that you don't create uh, 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 facilities for rodents to stay around you cover your waste bin with proper leads and then dispose them appropriately all right doc please before we go for any further yeah. uh, at this point i would want you to stress the need for uh, people to present early you know uh, i've done a health program over the years and most times you find out that doctors tell you that you know, when people, that, that most things that kill us is that when we don't present early. Can you let our people know the need to present no matter the disease? Because sometimes there are some diseases that you name, people would say, oh, it's a death sentence. Then they will just relax and, you know, that there is no hope. Yeah, thank you. Let me use some of the lifestyle modifiable diseases to present instances. My father, bringing it very close, had stroke before he died. What that tells me is he was hypertensive. The tendency for the ordinary person is to say, Oh, on a one or balan, I know when Papa knew a little of a lambany and Mamma knew when Una knew who went and the mochi and went. All manner of stories. However, you can beat it because these are lifetime modifiable diseases. Knowing that I have that risk, that my father had hypertension, the last time I checked my blood pressure was this morning before coming into the studio. I have my device and every morning I wake up, I check my blood pressure. I come back to work in the evening, I check. I play with it. It's normal. However, I know that any variation calls for one, for me to increase my rate of exercising, 
to cut down on my salt intake, to sleep more healthy, you know, to take longer naps and what have you, to cut down on my stress level. Because I know clearly that I have a risk, being that my own biological father had hypertension that led to stroke and then repeated stroke episodes that took his life. I am not fitting it. I'm a Christian. I go to church. I will not just sit down, cross my legs, my hands akimbo, and say it's not my portion. Not my portion has taken a lot of lives. And when you die, we just gather there and sing for you, oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, only remembered by what we have done. And one year, two years down the line, even your very close friends and associates begin to forget about you. You're fitting it. You're going to check. Does not change anything. The very pastors, reverend fathers, uh, 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 reverends, and all of these clergy who preach to us, what I have found out from my time in the clinic as a clinician is that most of them do not play with their routine medical checkups. They are the ones who interpret the Holy Scriptures to us. So why do you want to be holier than the more Catholic than the Pope? When the person who is teaching you the word is regularly going to hospitals to make sure that nothing is wrong with him or, or, or her, why do we sit down in ignorance and just let ourselves die carelessly? Somebody has a family history of diabetes and then you have never checked your blood sugar. And then we commonly say, one thing must kill a man. So one thing must kill a man means that you should kill yourself by yourself. Somebody works very hard, makes all the money he needs to make, will rather every evening on his way back from work, go to uh, ECA Wood Joint, sit down there with friends, at our three or four, Gotala and ECA Wood Madam, and they are just maybe two or three persons. They consume all the alcohol, gets home has very short sleep because he has had a lot of alcohol that evening. There is a lot of snoring and just slept immediately. A lot of snoring. So the oxygen supplied to the, to the system, especially the brain, is so reduced. And then in the morning, this same person jumps out very early to beat traffic or to get to uh, the shop very early. They finish the next day. He continues with the same cycle. Hot belly all over the place and a lot. And then what this person will tell himself is, no, uh, my you don't know my father. So my father was very big. It's very, so very important. It is very important that we regularly check and not leave things to chance. When you see a doctor once every year, there are studies that have shown that it prolongs your life by five to ten Yes. All right, hold it there. We take a short break now. Let's feel the pulse of the masses concerning the topic at hand. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I take my BP, then I do regular uh, sugar level, uh, then I do jogging. I watch what I eat mainly. As I'm getting old, I need to watch what I eat. In the community where I live now, I stayed at Urum, Okanot. So they are the, the health service. I don't think there is, there is any, I don't think there is any medical center there or uh, the only one we have is uh, Ave Maria owned by Catholic Church. But the place is just like a shadow of itself, it's non-existence. And you know children, mostly why we say medical should be improved is because of children and pregnant women. They don't expect them to travel all the way to, from uh, there to Regina, which is expensive still. Uh, it's only mainly it's Catholic Church and the government that provide health care. The private sector is too high. Private hospitals, they are expensive. It's for government to add, government and public spirited individuals, at least to assist government. Build health centers closer to the people, like Achina, where I come from. You have a, a health center there. Medical doctor is there 24 hours. Yeah, that kind of a thing, it doesn't exist in our cannot. You have to go for uh, a lot of places before you can get it, which is not good. Health service in our own locality is okay. In our locality, we have a lot of drainage systems 
within the uh, streets, uh, which we uh, we reduce stagnant water that we inflamed mosquito. I eat right normally, and then sometimes I jog, and then walking. Walking can never be underestimated. It's very good for health. Sometimes you go for medical checkups too. So shall you learn to listen to your body? Yes. I guess you get to know uh, when you are about to fall sick or not if you really, really listen. So if they can actually just cut down on the time, maybe get more workers, I don't know. And uh, maybe to just assist with the ones there already. I believe the, the weight won't be much because normally people do trip in there. In, in quantums because of the price but if there, uh, if there are more staff to attend to them you find out that the queue is very long and then if it's an emer uh, emergency it doesn't uh, actually work before the person gets to see a doctor the thing might have actually deteriorated to a very bad state and that is it living healthy in this country is quite difficult but at least uh, we, have, we have been managing how to maintain a healthy living uh, because uh, it is even difficult at this time to uh, to take three square meal or to have a balanced uh, a balance, uh, food. But at least to live healthy, just to keep your environment uh, healthy, clean your environment, tidy up the whole places. That's, that's the little that we, can, that we can provide as a person. Our health facilities are, are not working. That's why all the government officials, when they, have, you know, when they have health challenges, they fly abroad. But the pharmacists cannot afford, uh, cannot afford the capital to obtain uh, treatment abroad. Right, we've had uh, people speak on the issue at hand. You know, most of them actually we are saying what they can do on their them, themselves or their own to keep healthy. You know, the last person that actually spoke that the, the poor man cannot really, you know, fly abroad to get so the little you can, and that brings us to you know the issue of the environment. Uh, the, the state government uh, actually started by trying to evacuate the heaps of refuse we have in Onichaobuko, Idemili and or whatnot. And now they've given order that people should not dump refugees indiscriminately. So what's your thoughts, sir? Yeah, uh, for me... Oh, sorry, before you go on, let's see who is here. Hello? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from the north to Ghana. Talk to us. Oh, the call has dropped. All right, go ahead. Unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. yeah, for me, uh, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Governor, was sworn in on 17th of March. And then by the next day, boom, he was at uh, Oboko. That for me underscores the importance he has placed on issues that have to do with the environment. Throughout his campaign period, and even now as a governor, you hear him talk consistently about making our cities greener, making our communities cleaner, safer, greener, towards achieving that prosperous and livable homeland. That is something he says all the time. To match word with action, he immediately moves to sight. And as if, as if he, he, he planned with WHO, because <laughs> when you look at the three basic points they made, you know, one is, are we able to reimagine a world uh, where clean air, water, and the food are available to right. all? Then second says where economies are focused on health and well-being, which we will talk later about the budget on health, uh, health sector in yes. this country. Then where cities are livable and people have control over their health and the health of the planet. Right. Now, uh, everything that has that you just read out, mm. which is the thought of the World Health Organization, is encapsulated in the drive of the governor in these early days. Making sure, because you saw him and the deputy, just let's say the deputy governor 
on ground, ensuring that the drains are cleared, the heavy heaps, the mountains that have become uh, uh, refuse dumps are cleared. Let's welcome this person. Hello. Good morning. Your name, your name, and where you're calling from. Okay, I'm calling from uh, Niger State. All right, your name? Yeah. My name is Ebenechi. Ebenechi. I just want to agree. So, Ebenechi. Okay, okay, Ebenechi, you're welcome. Uh, uh, that's why I think uh, uh, my message is uh, doing a nice job here. Yeah. All right, <laughs> thank you. Uh, enjoying everything that you have been saying. It has been so good to me. So, a lot of things that you have opened my eyes to. Thank you. Uh, sir, I have an issue. I just want to verify, sir. That issue is that I saw one young man, and uh, he, he said to me that his manhood, when he was about, he suddenly started dead. So I'm getting shorter. Then after he explained to me, I took him to a doctor. Uh, I said, whether well, there is a case that's supposed to be conducted. But the doctor said to told him to go and buy two million. And but I believe the environment here we are reciting. I found out that that two million was not available. I don't know if there is any other information or something you can give to the patient, sir. Okay, maybe we take your number. I think this should be personal. We, we, we take your number. Call Your number is 070. Three. Okay. All right. Later, you will hear from the doctor. Yeah. Thank you very much. Our own Onyemechi from yeah. Niger State. Thank you for calling in. Uh, thank you, Simon. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Yeah, right. bless you too. Thank you. All right, Doc. Uh, you know, we were saying something yeah. about the environment and what yeah. the governor yeah. is doing yeah. uh, presently. Yeah. So I was saying clearly that. Uh, like you said, uh, it's it, uh, the, the, the theme of the year coinciding with the drive of the governor tells you clearly that somebody is thinking. The impact of the environmental damage that humans cause is unquantifiable. For instance, people are not able to link flooding to the food chain. And that's a terrible issue when you have filled up drains with refuse and the original water paths that were designed by town planners when these cities were built are obstructed. Water will naturally find its course to get to the natural water sources like the rivers and streams which is typically the, the, the aim of every town planner, to interconnect drains in such a way that it will flow into either man-made canals, but ultimately to natural water bodies. Once you block them, you have a lot of flooding because water must find its way somehow. Everywhere gets flooded. When the volume is emptying even into the natural water sources, Instead of coming in bits and pieces, there is nothing to break it. It pours at once. You see a lot of rivers and streams begin to overflow their banks. And then there is flooding every year. When you have flooding, it washes away homes, washes away farmlands, such that there will be a lot of food shortage because farmers will suffer losses. And when this happens across an entire region, your guess is as good as mine. The little food we have can only be left exclusively for the rich. Then the poor cannot have access. Even the poor who farm themselves, the little that will eventually come out after a flooding season, they have other competing needs for which they have to sell this farm produce and then use that money to meet their other basic needs. So there is hunger. The import of hunger is usually not talked about. When, where you have that there is malnutrition, 
Nigeria in sub-Saharan Africa has the highest incidence of malnutrition. A lot of deaths that happen among especially under five and children generally is because of malnutrition. You see people stunting and then you have incidences of people having protein energy malnutrition and then it leads to death. The, 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 the subcute fat and all of that grow very lean so that there is no barrier. And then these persons get exposed to all manner of uh, uh, weather influences. So, beginning from the fact that when we indiscriminately dump waste within our environment there, we create breeding sites for malaria, that is the mosquitoes, female anopheles that will now bite on us, bite us and then transmit the plasmodium to having rodents all over the place. In uh, the other parts of the world, like in Southeast Asia, Doing the same thing, you see a lot of dengue fever all over the place. The Aedes aegypti mosquito uh, uh, giving you all of that. So, to that extent, when we look at it, poor housing, bad air, and the import of all of those on human health. People keep falling sick, and because they don't even seek the right health care, they begin to have shortened lifespan, and people die mysteriously. And nobody investigates. All right, this. now let's look at the uh, affordability and accessibility yeah. of health in this part of the world, especially Anambra State, where we find ourselves. Uh, we know um, the, that uh, the health sector somehow is underfunded in this country, and uh, of course, Anambra State sometime okay during the last uh, administration floated the uh, health insurance scheme and all what not. Could you let our people know, you know, how they can access health, health you know, in the state uh, in an affordable rate and, of course, the encouragement to key into that to get health? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, uh, just to say that at this point, uh, I remember the last days of... Uh, uh, the former governor, His Excellency Governor Willie Obiano, whenever we appeared in any event, the calls you get is, oh, uh, once this government ends, Asia is going to end. And we kept reassuring people that, no, it is an instrument set up by law, okay? There are legislative frameworks that mean that Asia is here to stay, even beyond Governor Willie Obiano. Today, thankfully, Exactly three weeks after his exit from office, Ashia is still here. So what that tells us is that it is an institutional framework of government that is here to stay. Ashia, Anambra State Health Insurance Agency, and the scheme that is uh, set up, you know, to, to, to run, was created as a child of necessity to ensure that our people have access to health care that is of good quality, that is readily accessible and above all things affordable the affordability context of health insurance cannot be overstated all over the world everybody agrees that the surest vehicle to attaining universal health coverage is to have health insurance card so that whenever you are sick or you just feel like having health check regular routine medical checkup you do not think of your pocket, the financial barrier. Even a rich man, okay, suffers catastrophic health expenditure when you do not plan for your health. We are all, all of us, one major sickness away from poverty. I have seen a lot of people who used to be stupendously rich, but then one ailment just comes from nowhere and dries up that wealth completely. So, how do we continue running around in cycles when there are institutional frameworks that will give us a lot of financial risk protection, which the health insurance scheme is there to fulfill? In our region, for example, Anambra State has taken the lead by having a functional health insurance scheme that several states have come here to do study tour on, on what we are doing. A lot of states that are today doing well with health insurance came here to borrow the model that we are implementing here, especially like our adoption model and some of the things we have done innovatively in Anambra. Only yesterday I saw on the news that Gombe State started a mobile uh, uh, health platform. Anambra started it in the country. But people in our own state 
Okay, well, thankfully, we have over 150,000 individuals registered on the scheme. However, if you put that as a numerator to a denominator, which is the total population of Anambra State, that is so paltry. Why do we have a functional scheme in the state, yet we go outside of it to seek health care? With paying 12,000 Naira a year, you have access to choose any facility of your choice. And we have over 200 facilities scattered across every local government of Anambra State. There is no local government in Anambra that does not have a functional Anambra State Health Insurance Agency accredited provider, which is very close to you. You do not have to travel if you live, let's say, in a village in uh, 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 Urumba. You do not have to come all the way to Waka. You have facilities around Oko, Umunze, and all of those places where you can go to and get the same quality of care rather than coming to Oka, the delay and all of that. And ditto for several other parts of the, of the state. So, we're just paying 12,000 Naira. You choose any facility of your choice, very close to you, that will give you the access you're talking about. And then, when you get to facilities to access care with that card, once it's functional, you do not have to pay for consultation. You do not have to pay for referral. When the condition cannot be attended to at the point where you are, they will refer you to a higher, to, uh, for specialist care. And ASHIA pays for that. Your laboratory investigations for the services that are covered, ASHIA pays for that. The drugs are also covered. You only need to pay 10% the cost. You, you, you know, but we have challenges. Oh, you know, Doc, a, yeah. a, a lot of people are complaining. Uh, yeah. You know, most times that there are some cases that ASHIA doesn't cover. That know? is absolutely yeah, true. Yeah, what happens, you know, when somebody comes with such a case that ASHIA doesn't cover, what would the person do? Yeah, thank you. Just to say first that there is no health insurance anywhere in the world. I mean, anywhere in the world that covers every condition. I give you an instance. I spoke with my friend in Manchester sometime last month, and she told me, yeah, much, that herself and the husband have issues with uh, 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 having a second baby. They went to hospital, issues of infertility, okay, secondary infertility, but they cannot be attended to because they already have one child. So the NHS is scheduling them to be attended to on the list, on the waiting list, in three years' time. That's the way insurance works everywhere in the world. In their own case, treating infertility and conditions around it is covered. But your calendar cannot, your time cannot come until after three years. All right, let's see. So that's the way here. insurance works everywhere Hello. in the world. Hello. Hello. Good morning, madam. Good morning. What's your name? My, I am Alex. I'm an agent. Okay, Alex, from I'm where? I'm an agent, yes. From where? I'm in Lagos actually, but I'm, uh, I'm from Orisha in Anambra State. Okay, you, you're calling from Lagos now? Yeah. All yes. right. Oh, yeah, quickly, quickly, for want of time. Yes. Okay, what arrangement do you have in place for the supervision and regulation of these, uh, the insurance scheme? Because we find that doctors are times after offering the service to get their money back, it takes a long time, and you see, most of these doctors are just operating with what they generate. What arrangement do we have in place to make sure that doctors are paid? So, what is the point? But it's not done. That is what I'm asking. So, oh. that will help to actually make this a wonderful one. All right. Thank, Th you. thank you very much, Alex. Thank yeah. you. Uh, thank you so much, Alex, uh, our brother in Lagos. Uh, just to put on record that uh, what he's saying is a general issue with health insurance. Okay, where healthcare providers are not reimbursed in time. In Anambra State, we do not owe any healthcare provider. It's on record. Since ASHIA started its operations, 1st of January 2019, let me tell you, for this month, April, the capitation for our healthcare providers, we have fully paid. All right, quickly. Okay. Finally and yeah. quickly, please, uh, I would want you to really encourage our people on the way to, you know, if we can change the narrative of yeah. um, 
uh, our attitude to health and of course our attitude to environment for better, better healthy living, please. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, as a final charge, what I really want to say to our people is uh, the same way I know I na shiva na onye galondo paako onye lo eliye kai bone jina kanye wotelo wanye nyamu the mindset that one thing must kill a man and the mindset that it is not my portion odezi kobo portion here for it not to be our collective portion we must take issues of climate change very important if we climate change or look on a hangini ikuku. Climate change simply refers to even dynamic to our environment that has made it to change from what we used to know. Growing up, we had cleaner air. If at my own age I can comfortably say that now, as a child growing up, Norka here, that I had air that was cleaner, that we didn't have a lot of cases of asthma, that people were not dying as much as they are dying today from diseases, it goes to tell that. Even my own parents, their own story will be way better. How do we continue to get our society degenerate by our own attitudes? Why pempe? I know now one ototo. Okay, now Iyagu here, where I was in primary school in Iyagu. I am to Kuagevia all over. Maybe before we go home, I am to Kuagevia and go and put it in a receptacle properly. In the morning, when we come in, the little things that we needed to do, we will sweep. At home, we used to sweep. Clean up. I didn't have to make clean up no one. There was no time growing up that I saw. No car here where I grew up. That you go on the street and the streets are littered. Littered. Just by if be hospital here where my father's house is. We used to all come out together to clean our gutters by ourselves. We had that Saturday, the last Saturday of the year sanitation during the military. That was enforced. Clean up. Then you see sanitary officers going around to monitor. But even before that one, I in Asagota every Saturday. Only when I a portion. As a child, I had my own portion. What I needed to clean up, I used to clean around our tap with public water supply in our My own portion I remember was to clean around our tap down to the gutter and all of that. Wash it away with my older brothers to make sure that now. That channel that will lead to the big gutter in front of our house, a big canal, not the truth. We did it as our citizen, you know, our own responsibility to the society. We used to do this. But today, no child does all of those kind of things again. And then, in our work with mother, Atu will not be indiscriminately. Or say, okay, and what have you. Why have we degenerated so much? People just wind down their cars and throw things out. And then these are non-biodegradable things. Mother Mucha soft drink on a plastic can. It will not biodegrade. It's not like throwing out the peel of banana. I'm not encouraging people to throw out banana peel. But I'm just making a comparison. That is a degradable, biodegradable uh, 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 element. Yeah. Material. It will go there. Over time, the course of nature will make it to degrade and then form part of the soil. However, when you throw especially non-biodegradable materials out. It clogs everywhere. So you see people around the riverine areas of Anambra cannot even fish because our attitude, if I name it, upland, it eventually it washes into the rivers and the um, aquatic life is affected. We do not have food. The kind of food I need, today we only eat fish pond, mm -hmm. fish from pond. When I was growing up, as young as I am, I didn't know what was fish pond. I didn't know what was, uh, 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 what do you call this, frozen fish and all of this. We had people go to the rivers River, to, to go and fish. fish. All of these places where estates have been built, where you call it Iago Estate today. I had the river, we saw it. I saw it. People used to go there to go and fish. And a lot of things happened around it. In this city, talk more of in uh, 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 very far villages. But over time, building indiscriminately on water channels, not giving setbacks when you are mm. building, you know, a lot of these issues have clogged up the uh, city. No trees, in front of my father's house, we had uku, uh, fruit. Uh, uh, inside, we had uh, uh, ube, then we had uh, uh, oloma, 
we had, uh, uh, what did we have again? I, I remember these ones, growing up. Season after season. Then at the back of the yard, we had mango. At every season, we had one thing or the other to climb the trees as children to go and pluck. Mm. Today, all of that is gone. What we are rather interested in is planting flowers. Or what about local flowers? The one I import from Obodo Ibo. And then you bring these foreign things. It is not compatible with our Sorry. soil here. And it begins to take up a lot of space. Honestly. Dealing of the natural plants that uh, we are supposed to dog, have. Honestly, Doc, we can't... So a lot of climate we, change we can't, and we, we are can, uh, endangering our lives. We can't really, yeah. we can't really exhaust this uh, topic today. It's, it's much... You know, and uh, we have a lot to talk about, but uh, uh, this, the much time could allow us to take If I on can the have program. five seconds. <laughs> People will always go to service their cars. Yes. You don't allow your car to knock engine before you go and service it. Why don't you, your human body, that, go that, to that hospital? Ca that carries the main, that carries the main person. everything. You can avoid your car knocking engine, but you believe you are superhuman. Why not say not your portion on your car so that the oil will finish, the temperature will rise, the top will burn, and the engine will knock. But for your own body, is where you say not my portion. Thank you very much, Dr. Simeon Onyemechi, for uh, this uh, expository session. Thank you so much You're welcome. for it's coming. My pleasure. And that's how we wrap up. Good morning, Anna Brasho. Today, let's all remember this. If you let not, if you do not, <laughs> if you do not take care of your life, the enemy will eat up. That's the adage you've been speaking here since Agarando Baku Oniro Elie. My name is Nonyan Wokoye. Tomorrow is another day. Bye for now.